honor. Um, first and foremost, uh, thank you for joining us uh, on The Source. Uh, for those that don't know, uh, Jewel Jones or Representative Jewel Jones is the youngest state representative in Michigan history. Um, I don't want to go into too much of your story uh, on my end, but uh, give the people a little bit of, you know, your background. I know, you know, back in, in 14, you defeated old Robert Pope uh, with 66 percent of the vote. So uh, let the people know, you know, how you got started and, you know, how you 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 are maintaining the seat that you got. Right. Well, I appreciate you having me on, too, brother. Uh, you know, I got started back in the day. So uh, when I was a young and back when I was a sophomore in college, I was 19. I first ran for city council. Um, and so uh, that was in 2015. It was in my hometown of Inkster. Um, just a year later, unfortunately, my state representative had passed away. Um, and I was down south training. I ended up joining the Army. You know, I wanted to be a spy back in the day. And so I joined the Army. I was ready to go take over the world. And I was down training in uh, Fort Knox in Kentucky. I got a phone call about um, Julie passing away. And the, I found out when I got back later that July that I was the Democratic nominee to run for the seat in the legislature. And so we ran a, a campaign, an orthodox campaign for about three months um, in 2016 and won. Um, and so I was only on city council for a year, jumped right to the legislature. Um, and then we had our second election in 2018. And then I'm headed up for my final election uh, since we have term limits in Michigan this year. I uh, ran unopposed in the primary um, then I got to go against another Republican uh, in November, about a couple of weeks from now. But, um, you know, we just been working for people. I'm, I'm the same product of the community I've always been. My parents always got me involved in service um, in the church and the community. Everyone that's out here in my hometown and the surrounding communities have raised me. Um, so I think, you know, I'm just, I'm one of theirs. And so they take care of me, I take care of them. That's how I really retained the seat. You know, we just built the team. So, so how was it navigating the political process um, at such a young age? I'm sure, I'm sure there was some eyebrows raised, and I'm sure there was <laughs> probably some hate in here or there. Um, so, so how was that? And you know, as a young black man, um, you know, what challenges did you initially face um, in, like I said, taking that seat? Yeah, you know, I, I think people definitely always are saying like, "Hey, you too young, too you too this, you too that." Um, and that was the beginning of the conversation. And then, you know, of course, I've gotten older. They've seen our work ethic. You know, people begin to uh, kind of put that aside. Um, the problem we deal with now is that as our district expands and we move out in some of these other suburban communities and we're dealing with people that are just, you know, blatantly racist, people that are extremely prejudiced for years. Um, and we still have to work for them. And you, and you feel me? And it's like, we're still going to do the same work for them. It's just something we have to deal with. But um, after we constantly interact with so many different people and build, you know, we have to build relationships with them. I think once we continue to do that, um, we've seen a lot of that subside. And so, um, you know, initially it was difficult um, just making sure that people would actually listen, that people know that, hey, I don't, I'm not just doing this because it's something I want to do or I'm not only going to take care of my people in Inkster. Uh, we just have to show people that, hey, we work for you, we're going to be here for you. And we've been doing that for a few years now. And so, it's been going pretty good. We don't hear about too many more issues now. So, so I know that um, within your your seat, you represent uh, the 11th district, and that's uh, Garden City, Inkster, and I believe uh, is it Dearborn Heights. Yes, a portion of Dearborn Heights, Westland, and part part of Levine too. So now, for those that don't know, what now you're from Inkster? What area of Michigan is Inkster? What's the major city? So Inks is like southeastern Michigan. So my entire district is on the southern and western, uh, I, I would say, cusp of Detroit. And so okay. we're about yeah, we're about like 10, 15 minutes from Detroit. OK. OK. So since I would say so, my, my question would be, and just to get into some of these, you know, the crooks of some of the things that people, you know, want to know, um, since initially being elected, what has been, you know, I know you focus on education. Um, and wanting to keep a lot of the talent from Michigan in Michigan. Um, so what has been, or what would you say has been your biggest success since initially being elected? You know, the, the, the biggest success I would probably say, um, putting policy and legislation and stuff like that aside, I would say just the, the way we're able to inspire some of the young people to just reach for higher. You know, coming from where I'm at, um, you're not exposed to a whole lot. You don't have access to a lot of things. You don't have a lot of different opportunities. And so I think, 
you know, not just myself, but many others um, who've gone and done great things from Inkster, uh, from a forgotten place that we really show the world, um, but primarily those young people that, hey, anything is possible, you just have to do it. Now on a legislative, uh, legislative piece, just recently, the governor just signed um, and passed through the clean slate um, expungement bill package we've been working on it for a while. So we just streamlined the expungement here in the state, um, making it automatic for some people, um, expanding what you can expunge, uh, making sure that marijuana uh, felonies are, are getting cleaned off of people's records, things like that are just common sense. I think that was probably one of my biggest things, only because that um, definitely improves people's ability to be employed, to own homes, to go back to school and get loans for, you know, and so uh, that's, that's probably one of the biggest things for sure. That's what's up, man. And that, I mean, I think that's, that's important for people to hear. And for me to hear uh, a young black man uh, speak in those terms um, is inspirational because it's a lot of the same issues being faced in, in, in cities across the country. Um, and that kind of leads me to, to asking how, how has it been navigating your personal political process uh, in the Trump era? Because I know you got elected right, it was right after Trump was elected, right? Well, it was, we were actually, uh, actually, it was going on around the same time. So we, we, okay. we came in, we came in, the city council was right before, but then the same way, same time you went president was when I went to the legislature. So, you know, we, we kind of like colleagues, you know, in the <laughs> How, and how, how's that? How's that been? It's been very interesting, you know, and we've we, we seen how the election was going to go. And I remember that night I went to sleep. I was just like, man, I, we're going to wake up in the, in the morning. It's going to be a whole different world. Um, and it has been for real. You know, it's, it's like people feel like they can do whatever they want to do, say whatever they want to say. Um, and I look at I think about President Barack when he was in office, um, you know, and if you would have been doing some of the things just an inkling of the things that the current guy is doing, like we would, he, he would have been under, under prison somewhere. And so, uh, you know, that even just is moving me so much more to be getting more active and letting people know, yo, we got to get out and vote. We got it. We got to flip the house in Michigan. Michigan. We got to do all these different things because uh, I don't know if people can, you know, I'm, I, I'm in good shape, right? You might be in good shape, but it's a lot of people that can't handle another four years of this president. That's know? true. And, and that, that kind of, you know, for you to speak on, on what it was, uh, you know, like having Barack in office, um, being a young black man and, and speaking on the importance of voting. I think uh, one, seeing a, a young black guy like yourself, who I know in, uh, back in 2019, you were on the Forbes uh, 30 under 30 list. Um, and, and that's extremely inspiring. And outside of being a young black politician, um, how, how would you, suggest that we urge young black men to just be involved in the political process, not only voting um, and understanding who we're voting for and understanding that we can get people in and out of these seats. Uh, what would be your encouragement uh, for getting black men, you know, from 18 to whatever age out to, you know, vote and, and become a part of the political process if they're not? Right. Well, I, I think it all starts with the relationship and you got to go meet people where they're at. And so with me, whenever I'm trying to get somebody involved or more engaged, it's never with me going straight up to them and saying, hey, you need to vote. You need to run for office. Uh, what we have to do, though, we have to cultivate and, and you know, and foster an environment where people feel comfortable uh, with trusting you. And so if I go out, you know, I'm, if I'm on the block, I'm trying to figure out what you got going on. You know, uh, what, what's happening? What, is, what does life look like for you on a daily, a daily basis? Now, pending that, that conversation, um, then we can figure out you know, what can you do? You know, what are you passionate about? Let's figure out where you can fit in in this community where you can really, uh, you know, improve and enjoy what you're doing. I mean, so I, I you know, voting definitely is, is the step, but I think when we talk about getting involved in different levels, I like to sit down with people, you know, figure out what are you really willing to do to give back? And, you know, what are you good at? And let's get you there so you can actually, uh, you know, improve the conditions that we all live in. Now, how has it been, um, you know, obviously we're all dealing with the COVID pandemic um, and, you know, you say making sure we're sitting down and, and meeting with people. How has it been navigating the COVID crisis, um, you know, from your position and knowing that, you know, people are, are going through some things um, and it doesn't look like it's going to get any better anytime soon. Um, but how are you navigating COVID with, you know, your term being up this year and, 
plans for reelection. Um, how's all that going in the middle of the pandemic? Well, I, I think for us it's going good. You know, I have an excellent team, a uh, wonderful support system. And because of the way that, you know, we're just the, the reach that we have uh, and the support that we had, um, it almost was like we move, we were moving seamlessly through the process. Um, the only problem is just making sure that we are constantly staying in touch with people to figure out, you know, what resources they need. Unemployment is a, a big thing right here in the state. So that, that's been taking up most of our time trying to make sure people are getting what they need to get to survive. Um, but for us, I mean, in, in terms of just paying attention to the protocols and the procedures that we need to abide by, you know, wearing a mask, um, staying clean, not being all up in people's faces, being socially distant, um, you know, that's, that's, that's something I, I kind of learned growing up. You know, my parents always tell me to wash my hands. Don't let people be all up in your face. And so, uh, you know, we moved to that, that process fine. And plus, we've been doing plenty of these Zoom calls and stream yards and blue jeans and stuff like that. Um, and so... Not much has really changed. We even still go out to the Capitol for work. And, you know, people come up there, crazy people come up there with guns and have rallies and do all this other kind of stuff up there. Um, and we're not really so much on that. Our biggest thing has been constituency services. And so when before the, the pandemic started, we were in the office taking calls and responding to different things. And now uh, my staff is just able to do that from home. So not, you know, not a whole lot has changed. That's what's up. That's what's up. Now, um, Another thing that, you know, uh, we've been seeing out here, I'm out here actually in LA, uh, we've been seeing a lot of, obviously the numbers of people early voting um, are extremely high. Um, and there are, there have been a few situations uh, with people storming the Capitol and, you know, uh, issues of voter suppression and voter intimidation. Um, are you guys experiencing that up there at all? And, and what are the plans to combat that to make people more comfortable with, you know, visiting the polls when it's time to? Right. I mean, definitely. I mean, that's been happening here. Like I was just saying, you know, people stormed the Capitol uh, just just a, a week or a week or so ago. Um, we just had the feds and the troopers and, and local police authority um, charge these cats after arresting them with trying to kidnap the, the, the governor um, here in Michigan. And so, you know, people really just out of their mind. Um, but we have a, like, for example, our Secretary of State has been doing an excellent job this year, really doing some monumental things like same day registration. Um, so you, you can go right up to the polls if you are comfortable with doing so. And regardless of you register before, you can register on that, on that same day. We also have no reason absentee voting now here in Michigan. So um, at first to get an absentee ballot, you have to have a reason like you're out of town or you go to college in a different city, but now you can get an absentee ballot just because you want one. Um, and that eliminates the entire problem of going to the polls. Battling the COVID outside um, gives you a, a ample time to research candidates and figure out who you would like to vote for up and down the ticket. Um, and so I, I would definitely say we're going through some issues, but our uh, state's leadership has been extremely um, effective this year in trying to make sure we get everybody um, counting. Man, that's amazing. Um, and like I said earlier, uh, you know, you're, uh, I know you're, the term is up December 30th um, of this year. Uh, so plans for reelection and what you see um, uh, as necessities, uh, you know, for your next term, what are the, the, the key items that you're looking to continue focusing on? And then, you know, even some of the new things that you want to, you know, kind of recalibrate and focus on. Right. Um, definitely going to stay on that criminal justice reform. I think auto insurance reform, especially here in the state, uh, but really just putting policy aside. I think, you know, the black community for a long time has failed uh, to protect our people and the offices and the departments and stuff that we get. So secession plan is, is critical for me. So for these last two years, I'm, I'm figuring out how do we create a pipeline to get someone else um, in office and how do we um, get more people in office? How do we get more people in leadership? How do we get more people in positions of power for us? Um, so that's something I'll be focused on heavily. And then um, just getting some anchor businesses in the community. And so I, I like what um, Biden is talking about. Biden and Harris talking about um, investing this money back in the black community um, because we're, we're even talking about starting an incubator here in my hometown and being able to reap the benefits from you know, much more money and different loans and different programs and, and home ownership programs. Uh, I think the incubator will be blessed um, to get it operating in that kind of atmosphere. And so uh, 
most of the stuff I'll be probably setting some of the policy aside and doing more of building the bench um, and putting up some establishments in the community that can really drive development. Man, and, and I think that's that's without a doubt needed uh, top to bottom. And it's it's interesting. I know people here, well, for one, people are going to you know see this interview and they're going to hear that. And I want to know you personally, how do you feel? Um, you know, we talk about young black men voting and we talk about young black men and black men in general becoming a part of the political process. How difficult does it make it or how confusing is it when, you know, individuals hear the things that you say and then, you know, we turn on Instagram and we see what the media is saying regarding what Ice Cube is doing. Um, you know, how would you advise uh, that, that Black men approach even listening uh, without making an assumption uh, of, of one case or the other? What, what would you suggest in terms of that? Well, you know, I, I think even as the scripture says, it says, speak what you know, testify what your eyes have seen. Right. And so we see a lot on social media. Um, and we need to leave that up to the person. So if people want to talk about Q, but they want to talk about 50, whatever, you you know, go 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 talk to them. Go ask them what's going on. I think we need to stop um, counting people out so quickly in our community because that's been something we've been doing for years. has been damaging to us. Uh, we just need to figure out, hey, let's go ahead and, and focus on what we can do. And what we can do is create a better situation for ourselves. And in order to do that, we have to vote for the right person. Um, and, and that's... Uh, what I would just tell black men to do is, you know, focus on what we can do. Don't be so tied up in social media. Don't be so tied up into what the next person is doing. Uh, figure out where you can help out, where you can improve things at and, and go in that direction. Absolutely. And, it, and that's that's top to bottom. Um, I, I was, you know, thinking about how, you know, how you got started and what do what does the young eight or nine or 10 year old um, who sees what you're doing and who's inspired by you? What, what programs are being put together for the young politician? Obviously there's AAU basketball and there's young music programs everywhere. And you know, there's always stuff to do during the summertime, but what does the young politician do? And, and who does the young politician you know, talk to in regards to you know, what he sees himself being? Right, you know, I think uh, that really takes a lot of, a lot of um, initiative from us that's already in your office probably. Um, Cause I mean, there's different organizations that you wouldn't be familiar with unless you're really in office. Like for example, the National uh, Black Conference of State Legislatures, for example, NBCSL, um, they do a lot of different things with getting people um, involved, giving them resources, helping you with your policy, um, getting you funding, helping you campaign um, and so forth. The young person that aspires to do something like that, um, there's internships, there's fellowships, there's opportunities for you to work with these organizations. Uh, for them to have you as ambassadors in the state. Um, and, and I see this happening with them. Um, you have the, the Young Elected of Officials Network, you got the Black Millennial Convention. Um, you have a lot of different organizations that uh, we had to do a better job as elected officials and as organizers and activists of connecting um, those young people too. Because um, we can talk about wanting to improve things and we can be out there on the front lines all the time, but if we're not um, taking care of the next generation change, which I think was an excellent question because a lot of times we focus on the teenagers or we focus on the people that are already in power. And we, just, we need to figure out how do we impact them at the earliest age um, so they can have a, that discipline and that drive to want to be involved and want to stay involved. So I think that was an excellent, excellent question. Yeah, because you I feel like you've changed not only the narrative, but you've changed the scope in what a politician looks like. Um, you know, and I, I feel like the only way to really change culture is to change reality. And I think, you know, when, when these young guys see, you know, uh, rappers and ball players, uh, it's easy to identify with. But if you ask a kid what a politician looks like, more than you know, likely they're gonna tell you it's you know, probably a white man. Um, and they don't really have uh, as many examples of somebody that walks like they do and talks like they do and you know, isn't just there on Monday and leaving Tuesday, but is on the front line um, and is really pushing the narrative of change. I think that's, um, that's amazing. So yeah, that, that was just, you know, kind of the thought behind that question. Um, so, so two more things, I don't want to keep you too much long. I know you, you know, you just hopping from call to call and interview from interview. <laughs> um, what would be your message overall um, moving forward with, with this being possibly the most pivotal election uh, of our lifetime for sure? Um, what would be your overall message 
not just to, to, to the young black man, um, but just overall to everyone, how important is it? You know, what, what do you feel like is the message that everybody needs to hear? Well, I think uh, definitely, like you said, this is definitely the most important election we ever been in. I'm 25 years old. So this is, this is like the, the game changer for me. Um, and I, I just tell people like one or two people is going to be the president um, on November 3rd. And so uh, it's clearly one person that's, that's better than the other person, uh, in my eyes, at least. And I think at the same time, we can't just look at the presidents, but we have to look at, you know, what, what does their administration look like? Um, who, who are they going to be appointing to the courts? You know, I'm, I'm a young black man. So when I think about uh, court appointments, I'm like, who, who might I have to stand in front of? And, you know, and, and somebody, somebody who's, who's up there right now is appointing blatantly racist young judges to life, like, you know, lifelong appointments. And these are people we can't elect. Um, I mean, unelect. And so I, t- I tell you all the time, when you, you, you cast that vote, you have to look at the whole picture. Um, and, and that's why this election is so important because there's so many different um, extensions that come from, you know, who you vote for as president. Um, who do you put in the Senate? Who do you put in the legislatures? Who do you put in Congress? Um, what proposals and millages do you vote for? Um, and I would say that's, that's basically what I tell people is just, you know, this election is just important because this is going to affect your day-to-day life. We're in the midst of a pandemic right now. You see what's going on because of the messages that um, are coming from the top and you see how people are acting. And so I, I definitely think we can be doing a lot better um, and we need a change of leadership. And so this is why we have to vote. Unless you know, people like the situation we're in right now, I don't think many people do. Absolutely, man. Absolutely. So where can where can we find you? I know, I know you're on the gram. I know you're on the book. I know you're on Twitter. Where can uh, where can everybody stay, you know, up to speed and up to date with, you know, what you're doing, uh, the initiatives you're pushing, uh, re-election? Uh, how can everybody find you? Yeah, definitely uh, on the gram and, and Twitter, all those spots. Joel Jones, uh, MI from Michigan. I'm on there, J-E-W-E-L-L-J-O-N-E-S-M-I. Uh, and anywhere else, just look me up on online or something like that. You can find me not hard to find. My information is public as elected official. Um, you know, you can pull up to the crib if you need to, you know, if you need some, if you need some help. But uh, we definitely accessible uh, anything that anybody need. And we're not just limited to the district. So um, yeah. you know, wherever you at, even out there on the West Coast, fam, you know, if you need something, you just give us a call. <laughs> Absolutely. So what, one more question. What's in your headphones right now? What you listening to? In my headphones right now, man, you know, I I just, I know from, love from the hometown, I don't know if this is bad, but you know, Sada just, Sada got the whole lot of Choppers remix. I know they just dropped with Nikki. Ooh, with uh, so Nikki, was, yeah. So that was big, big that was big for Sada. Um, and then, you know, just all my, all my local folk, you know, Big Sean just dropped his stuff not too long ago. Um, but of course, I'm trying to stay balanced. I got my gospel and jazz and stuff that I listen to as well. But I, you know, it's something else I'm listening to, but I can't, I don't really want to say it on the, gotcha. I got <laughs> you. The, the title of the song kind of bad. I got you. I got <laughs> yeah. you. Yeah. I'm, I'm going to I'm have to double back on you and send you some links. Send right. you some links for some stuff. <laughs> We're talking about that off camera. Right, but, right. Uh, but yeah, man, I, I don't want to take up too much time, man. I, I genuinely appreciate you, um, not just for talking to us, but uh, for leading, by example. Uh, I think a lot of times in, you know, in, in our cities and growing up, it's hard to find the guys that legitimately walk the walk. Um, so just man to man, person to person, I want to thank you uh, for, for showing us that there are other options in life um, and, and how to lead with, with grace and strength uh, as a black man. Uh, you're doing a lot, not only for the community that you represent, uh, the 11th district, the state of Michigan, but you're doing a ton for the country, man. And I, I, I pray to God that you know, I can continue to spread the word of what you're doing and the knowledge of what you're doing and we get more young black men in these seats. Hey, that's love, man. I appreciate that for sure, man. I appreciate you just allowing the platform because that's what we need to do more of too as brothers, you know, just share share everybody's victory, celebrate and continue to build. So um, I'm with you, brother, and I, and I appreciate the warm words and I look forward to building with you as well because uh, it's time to change the world for the better, man. So, so, is it, so is it safe to say you rolling with Joe? Hey, I'm definitely rolling with Joe. There, there go, baby. <laughs> I'm, I'm going go. to war for him right here in Michigan because, you know, we had an interesting election back in 2016. So we for sure with Joe. We for sure with Joe. Yeah, that's the slogan. That's the 
Appreciate you. Appreciate you, man. Get some rest. Take care of the family. We'll talk soon, my brother. Peace and love, bro. Love, brother. We all know that we must fix our criminal justice system. Here is Joe Biden's plan to reform it. Ending mandatory minimum sentences, ending private prisons, and end cash bail. A real plan for real change. I believe my criminal justice reform package is as strong or stronger than anyone else, than anyone has proposed. We will create a system that's fair and just. And we can get there together. I'm Joe Biden, and I approve this message.